in regards to the church and the Word of God. So I'm going to ask all of you to stand and give a warm welcome to Jan Markell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a seat. Okay, so just for the record, you guys, this is the headlines in the, for the last four days. So when I say headlines, I'm talking about things that could easily, if not directly, relate to Scripture um, or possibly Bible prophecy. Jan has her list, and because Jan is here, we want to make sure that she uh, speaks to us the way that only Jan can, and she's also going to touch on some things which I'm so grateful for. So don't leave, too, don't leave, <laughs> because she's going to mention some things that unscripted, you know, without plan, uh, Sundays we are going through right now, 2 Peter chapter 2 about false prophecies, false prophets and false teachers, and Jan's going to talk to us tonight about some things that are going on uh, in the body of Christ that are indeed false, but very popular. Oh, the false is always popular, always yeah. Yeah. And you've been covering it. I mean, no hell, Rob Bell. Wow. You know what I found out today? I, I found out today uh, that Rob Bell, how many of you here on Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was saddened today to find out that he has a disciple. He has a famous follower, a man who used to be very grounded and now who is a, is a, a bell ringer, a Rob Bell man is um, Rodgers, the quarterback on the Packers. What's his name? Aaron Rodgers got swept away by mm -hmm. Rob Bell. That's, that really bummed me out. Well, um, I, I, I wish I would have known that before the game. Rob Bell week. is dangerous, and I'm glad you yeah, are talking, yeah. talking about him. A shocking video, I'd actually seen it, but you know, interesting that it took a secular journalist, Martin Bashir. That's right to do the expose and to call him out and say, what on earth are you doing, Mr. Bell, with, with the theme of your, you're saying everybody goes, this is not a believer, Martin Bashir. No, not that I know, not that I'm aware of. Jen, you have a list, I'm, I'm spying on your, you wanna start? What's at the top of your list? Well, I mean, Saturday I'm gonna be talking about some of the prominent signs of the times, the problem is they change every 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I think, you know, I think you're on to one of the biggest ones, which is uh, the lurch left in the church, the apostasy in the church, the, uh, uh, the fact that churches are no longer giving heed to sound doctrine, and that is heartbreaking. Predicted. I'm not sure there's anything mm. more predicted in the Bible than that there would be an end time apostasy. Verse after verse after verse after verse. They won't give heed to sound doctrine. They'll give heed to fables. Um, just one after another after another. So when we see it happen, why are we surprised? I heard somebody on Sunday make mention of the fact that they were aware of a church somewhere, Midwest, or it was a small community. But the, uh, the population of the church had a particular view. A pastor came into, a new pastor came into town, and uh, that particular view that they had was definitely not a healthy biblical view. Mm -hmm. And they actually coerced that pastor to publicly endorse their view, even though he understood it to be against scripture. Oh. So here you are not only talking about apostasy, but now we've got, now we've got uh, a church that is fallen away that... Uh, is pulling young ministers away. Um, and that's, that's very, very sad. But so uh, I well, want to be faithful to your, to your well, schedule. Well, I'm just going to stay in this genre for, for a moment or two. And I, and I think there is, in 2019, some really significant things in a sad way certainly happened. We, we um, saw Christianity Today, which is, I think we should call it Christianity Astray, 
Um, You're talking about the magazine? The, the magazine, the, the magazine. And I mean, came out hammering uh, Donald Trump, telling him to step down, which I, it was just shocking when that happened. 200 uh, evangelical leaders, thank you. Yeah, 200 evangelical leaders obviously uh, stepped in and said, you know, this is, this is not right. Um, gosh, we've had critical race theory. I mean, and that's coming out of the Southern Baptist Convention, yeah. suggesting that um, we're, we're racist, et cetera. I mean, oh. look, I have done a study on, on the history of the evangelical movement modern times, starting with the National Association of Evangelicals. They came into being somewhere in the 40s to be a counter to the um, National Council of Churches. Mm. And in the, my understanding is in the 40s, this National Association of Evangelicals was solid as can be in standing for truth. And then all of a sudden, in the 90s, and the early 2000s, they started going... So haywire, it's it just, it's hard. I mean, some 15 years ago, they're, they're big, uh, global warming. Look, uh, I'm president of Minnesotans for Global Warming Foundation, okay? I wish it were true. Wish it were true, because I come from <laughs> Minneapolis. But, but why, why are evangelicals, what is this going to have to do with soul winning is all I'm saying. Well, listen, you know, if you don't know, you know, she mentions this argument of, of uh, climate change or global warming. You say, well, who cares? Who cares? What, what does that relate to the Bible? I would put that right there in the area of R Romans chapter one. Yes. Because um, it's, first, first of all, it's having no faith in God that he can take care of the planet. And it's about us saving the planet to the point where those who are rabid about that idea actually are very excited about s uh, catastrophes that lower human population on Earth. They That's want right. humans to die. That's right. Because a smaller human footprint is better for Mother Earth. And if you want to know where that's coming from, the spirit of it, you'll find it in Romans chapter 1. They worshiped and served the creator, creator. or the, the, creation, the, creation, the creation, rather than the creator and who is blessed what's going forever. On. That's what's going on. And I wonder if this is going to fill, if this isn't going to be a part of the coming one world religion. I'm going to talk about this on Saturday, which I think all the tickets are sold, but you can watch it on his channel. But I, I'm just wondering if all of this is part of the coming one world religion. Why, why would Greta Thunberg, the 17-year-old from Sweden, the truant. Who's, who's, who's declared the successor to Jesus Christ, that would be uh, image number three that I, I have. Uh, declared Times Person of the Year. Why not a president? Why not a prime minister? But here out of seven billion people, this is Times Person of the Year because she's again crying the sky is falling and the temperatures are rising and we only have 10 years left and we need a green new deal on, listen, during the tribulation, we're going to have a brown new deal. It's a, kind of a sad situation, it really is. Um, but why is someone like this celebrated? And I think this is the strong delusion of our time when this is the, as Jack said, they're going to worship the creation more than the creator, and that's exactly what's going on. And I think this fits into the coming one world religion. I'll get into that a little bit more on Saturday, but the coming global system, one world system, needs a crisis. It needs a crisis. We know it's the rapture. That's going to be the crisis. But before that, I believe it's this environmentalism. And let's be sewers of creation, okay? Nobody's saying we shouldn't care for right. creation. That's in Genesis, and we need to care for creation. Right. But when we have it going to this extreme, then I think this is, could be a part of the coming one world, world religion. And keep your eye on it, and it's part of the global agenda, is the crisis needed for one world is going to say, this will happen hmm. if we don't have a one world system. That's what I think. Yeah, well, it's interesting because, um, again, it goes to, it goes to the, the religious system, systems that are anti-Christ in spirit, 
but earth-related, man-deifying, or as we'll know from Scripture, earth-deifying, and just missing the mark completely, missing God uh, in all of that. Um, and, you know, it's very sad, too, because this Greta Thornburg, she's being just exalted in the world, and um, she's, how long has she been, how long, she's been ditching, she's ditched school for two years? Yeah. Right, she hasn't gone to school in two years. That's why, she, that's why she's called the truant. Did you know that? That's her, and she's, and so, and kids want to be like her now. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't need to go to school, I need to be like the time person of the year. <laughs> okay, yeah. but, um, uh, God rejection, you, you have this, um, or did we already pass that? God rejection, no, well, strong delusion? Yeah, well, I, I, I think, again, I'll talk a little bit more, too, about that on Saturday, but, but this... But this they're, not re- gonna be here, they're not going to be there on well, Saturday. They can watch it online, and they can watch it on... They, they, can, they can watch it on YouTube later. But, yeah, ha, but, Jack, have you ever seen... Have you ever seen the, the strong delusion... I mean, we love socialism now. Um, have you ever seen deleting God... I mean, I've got a shocking clip. I don't have it with me, but a shocking clip of how God is just deleted first from Europe and the other parts of the world, but now America. In, in Second Thessalonians, the Bible says regarding the, as we approach or get deeper into the, the, the times of the end, it says that when, when there's a temple built, well, it doesn't say when a temple's built in Jerusalem. All of a sudden, the Bible says in Second Thessalonians 2, out of nowhere, the Bible lets us in on something that hasn't happened yet. So listen, get, I, wanna, I want your attention. There is no temple in Jerusalem right now. All of a sudden, 2 Thessalonians 2 mentions a temple in Jerusalem in the future, and a man shows up called the Antichrist, and he's going to declare himself to be God. And the scriptures tell us that God, God is going to send those who dwell on earth at that time, That's strong delusions right, so that they right. will believe the lie. Has the definite article in front of lie. It's not a lie. There is a specific lie that is coming that unless God is protecting you, you're going to fall for it. Now, the amazing thing is we're not even there yet. There is no That's temple right. in Jerusalem. There's talk about it. All the, all the artifacts for it are, pre, are made. They have the blueprints for it. Everything's ready to go. They just don't have the thumbs up for it. What's interesting to me is we're not there yet, but we're seeing people already embrace strong delusions. Strong delusions. Things that make no sense. That strong delusion right now, I mean, up is down, black is white, good is evil. I mean, everything is upside down. It's an Alice in Wonderland world that is, I never thought I'd see the day that I'm seeing day after day after day. It's not just once a week, it's like once an hour, I just, I'm shocked. I'm shocked out of my mind sometimes that things are, what stories that are breaking on the news, situations that are uh, mushrooming before our eyes. I mean, it's, it's staggering. I mean, I mean, you got to the Middle East, which is in constant turmoil. I mean, we haven't even gotten to Jews and Christians are on the run everywhere on the planet. I mean, this is what's going on in... Uh, uh, Christian persecution is just staggering. Um, right. What's going on in, in uh, with with the Jews on the run? That they've got a clip of picture number um, four. End time Jews. Uh, are they? Uh, yeah. Yep. Look. And the yeah, end of Jewish huge. presence in Europe? Question mark. Now that's actually kind of a good thing because then they're going to go back to Israel. Going to, that's what God wants them to do, is to go back to Israel so yeah, that is his, his end time plan can, can really come into play. I mean, and then, then he steps in to start dealing with them, but they need to be in Israel. Yeah, for those of you who are not familiar with your Bible, the Bible tells us that prior to the physical return of Jesus to his land, he will call the he, the spirit of God, will call his people from all the nations of the world back into their own land. It doesn't tell us how he calls them. Isaiah, you can look at Isaiah um, 43. I think the first 11 verses help. But here we have this, look, France. Uh, France responded too late, to, too late, just too late, to the fact that uh, the Muslim population in France began yes. to attack the Jews. 
And France did nothing about it. And so what happened was the Jews, they have a history understanding, whoop, we remember this happening in, in Germany and in Europe. And so they packed up and they moved to Israel in these last few years. Yeah. And the Jewish ex, uh, evacuation out of France has really tampered with their economy. All because they couldn't stand up, they refused to stand up. But Jews, this rise of anti-Semitism is going on around the world. It's increasing in the United States, which is very alarming, uh, to where now the president had to issue an executive order. I don't know if you're aware of this. Yes, that was... Because of persecution against Jews in the United States, uh, President Trump issued an executive order uh, to protect the Jews. Did you know that? Uh, that's how bad it's getting. And so the, the thing is, but it's driving Jews back to their home that they'd never been to before. Again, all of this in preparation for exactly what the Bible had said would happen. Here's a headline. It's number three, you guys, if you want to put it up uh, just to get things going here. Trump fires back after Iranian leader condemns him on Twitter. Trump fires back and says, make Iran great again. <laughs> uh, and that kind of... Um, now look, this, this is something where along the, the issue with Iran, because it's in the news, it's, you guys hear about it every time Don and I get together, but um, it's number, uh, take number two, you guys, is former Iranian crown prince says Tehran, which is the capital of Iran, regime on the brink of collapse. That may or may not be true. The reason why Jan and I take issue with this, it may be true on the short term, you guys, but we know that from the Ezekiel uh, description, which you guys hear about every month, you're probably getting tired of hearing about it, but every month there's more news uh, that is formulating regarding possible fulfillment of Isaiah 30, Ezekiel 38, is um, they may have a collapse and maybe it will be a momentary reprieve, kind of like what we're having right now right, in, in America. Uh, because maybe, maybe God is going to just get the gospel out to a lot of Persians if that regime collapses. But we know this, that even if the regime collapses and they have a honeymoon season for a while, it won't be long lived because we know that from scripture, Iran, Persia, uh, is gonna join ranks and must join ranks with Russia. You guys are very well uh, in tune with that. And then Jan, this one, and I'll let you, I'll let you comment on these. <laughs> you, you know that something good must be happening with policy coming out of the United States when in slide number one, Iranian uh, parliamentary member, yeah. a government leader, announces a $3 million reward for whoever kills Donald Trump. Well, this is serious. This is very, very serious. This is very, very serious. It also tells you uh, that these few that control the Iranian people, they don't like what the influence of your nation has been having on Iran. That's right. Because the young people in Iran are rising up because they want freedom. <coughs> they want liberty. And, um, and they, some of them want the gospel, by the way, very badly. There's a lot of, there's a lot of rumors about the gospel exploding. Not supposed to hear about it. Absolutely, in Iran. in Iran. In Iran, yes. Um, I don't remember where I read this, but China, for a long time, China was the fastest growing, Christ, uh, fastest growing nation on earth regarding Christianity. China, the church, fastest growing. And then I've heard recently that in the last couple of years, that it may be that Iran yes. is the fastest growing uh, Christian nation on earth. Not Christian nation. It's the fastest growing, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Well, Christianity Christi is, is, <laughs> is bursting in, in Iran, but then the mullahs won't let it happen. Right. So, but if the mullahs were taken out of the way, that could be wow. the fastest growing Christian population. Could you imagine? Certainly in that part of the world. Another headline I saw, uh, Jack, is uh, Vladimir Putin being called the king of the Middle East. You don't have that one there, but, no, but Putin being called king of the Middle East. Get this leaps out of the Bible, leaps out of the Bible. Why? I hope but that's Jan, exciting. But Jan, know? why? 
Why does, how, Ex- well, explain, I think, explain I think, to someone who, who's not familiar. Yeah, I, th- I mean, he could be, and it's a speculation, so you better be careful. Um, he, if he isn't Gog, that's G-O-G, if he isn't Gog, he's certainly Gog-esque. He he's, he's fills the bill for, for being a potential representative of Gog from the land of Magog, and when I start, when the world is called, the secular world is calling him the king of the Middle East, I, I mean, I think that's huge. I really do. I think we should talk a little bit about this, this coin here, this coin right here. Oh. I think this was given to you today. Um, how often do you see, uh, I have nails and you don't. I so, don't have nails. So, um, Want to turn upside down? <laughs> Simple. Okay. Um, you want to explain what this is? This is, um, on this side is... This is not a joke, by the no, way. No, I, I, it's not. And I, we may have... Yeah. This is right here, the, the shekel. So, and on the back, by the way, what I think even as significant as what's on the front, Trump being compared to Cyrus you know, by the Israelis, but on the back is the temple. And if we got into a discussion here on the plans to build the third temple and no don't start don't send donations to build the third temple please don't do that but that's on the back of this coin as you can see um, right here Israel honoring a U.S. president quite like this this is yours Jack let me um so okay first of all everybody this is not a joke this is this is uh done by sanctioned by the Israeli government. This is not some souvenir guy down no. on, on Ben Yehuda Street. <laughs> this, is the, this is the real thing. And you say, well, that's ridiculous. That, that's, that's crazy. Listen, I understand any and all reactions to this. Here's my point. It, it doesn't matter what my reaction is to this or yours. It's their reaction to it. Right. Their reaction. They see the, the commitment that this president has made to them, and it has inspired them. You may or may not like that. It's irrelevant. It's already happened. And again, this is not, a, this is not plastic, and it's not a joke. It's a sanctioned government issue, a commemorative piece that they decided. This guy reminds us of Cyrus. Yeah. Israel says this. But Jan, as they're preparing their text and sending their questions, is there anything that you want to uh, touch on before we start taking care of I am out? concerned about, if we could just throw up uh, clip number six, I am concerned about um, the new Netflix series. Some of you may have seen it. <clears throat> and what is this? This is the new Netflix series called Messiah, which I believe is introducing the Antichrist. And... I think another one of the issues I have seen escalate in the last one to five years completely out of control is this rise of wickedness and this rise of an antichrist spirit. The antichrist spirit came to Twin Cities, the heartland, in October when President Trump came to uh, the Twin Cities to have just a a rally and, and thousands and thousands of People from the whole region came just to, you know, have a patriotic rally. And Antifa was outside. And you talk about the spirit of Antichrist. It, I mean, it was complete bedlam. And the town, Minneapolis, again, the heartland, was torn apart. So I, I sense the spirit of Antichrist around the world. We could cite 25 cities tonight where there's turmoil, rioting, anarchy, lawlessness. So then Netflix comes out with a series called the messiah but i believe it's introducing the antichrist but in their version you mean the, just the mindset of the antichrist uh, it's, attitude it's introduced and... no it's introducing a muslim messiah which the antichrist won't be a muslim folks just get that out of your mind not going to be a muslim but netflix and the producers who happen to be roma downey and mark burnett you would think they'd know better have produced it's a series on the Muslim Messiah who's come upon the world to save the world. It's, Has it's, anyone seen this? I've, I've not seen this. Has anyone seen it? It started January 1st. Wow. January 1st. 
So, I mean, I think this is ominous, to say the least. I mean, now we're glorifying, heralding, announcing, featuring. It's, it's funny to me that how the secular world... An antichrist. World, it's, it's funny to me how the secular world loves to, um, on their terms, yeah. talk about or post issues that are biblical, but they like it their way. They like it their way, and their way, apparently the Antichrist, who's they've got on earth now, happens to be clearly a Muslim, which that's a whole nother topic we're, we don't need to get into, because that's not, the Jews aren't going to, the Jews to, are not, the going, Jews to are not going to accept a Muslim Messiah, yeah. but anyway, that is not the point. The point is, we now have a TV series heralding the Antichrist as being here, I think that's significant. I really do. Wow. That's never happened before. So this series is not, um, uh, this guy's not walking around healing people and raising He's the walking dead. around doing miracles. And, yes. and what's his name? I wouldn't know. I don't know his name. But he, I mean, the name, I mean, he is named in the series. I haven't seen the series. I'm going to show huh. the trailer on Saturday at yeah. uh, Proximity. I'm going to show the trailer. It's about a two-minute trailer. And it's shocking. It's shocking. I'm not surprised, though, because we talked about it last time about, uh, I think we did, regarding all these action figure hero Marvel comic type yeah. uh, lords and gods and things and de demigods that uh, people, we love that stuff, the supernatural power stuff. And then you introduce God to somebody and they go, no way, there can't be a God. And yet you're perpetually yeah. entertained by these godlike creatures on your big silver screen. Yeah. It's very strange. Yeah. Well, keep your eye on that, please. And, and I mean, not, I'm not recommending you watch it, really not. But um, I think we ought to keep our mind, our eye on what the message is because it's saying he's here, he's going to do miracles, <laughs> and he's a good guy. If we could have one more clip, would it be number two? And that would be these three gentlemen um, Boris Johnson. Boris. Love and, them. and Trump and Netanyahu. And he, here's the thing with these three. And these three global leaders, uh, statesmen, to be honest, here's the thing. They have come against the globalist agenda. Yep. Th these three. Those three have guys. Come against the globalist agenda. Globalism. And one is head of the UK. He wants out of the EU. He doesn't want anything to do with one worldism or even uh, the European Union. Donald Trump has said, I'm. I'm a nationalist, I'm not a globalist, I want anything to do with globalism, and they're trying to throw Bibi Netanyahu out, yep. and he's interested in Israel, not the globalist agenda. So you've got these three powerful leaders, and, and I think that the globalist agenda, and I tell you, and I've got a whole message on that that I, I, I give quite often, I just gave it in uh, San Jacinto, California, but the globalist agenda in the last year, the last five years, just stunning progress. These three men are standing in the way. These three men. Yep. So what's going to happen? I mean, it's we, so need to, true. we need to pray for these three men because the globalists would love to take them out, really love to take them out so that their one world empire can be formed. And they're so standing in the way. It can't happen. Now, I mean, again, we're one election, one U.S. election away, Jack. Literally. One U.S. election away from, well, um, certainly a crisis just goes the wrong way because the globalists, the globalists will then get their grip. And, of course, those of us who want the end to come a little bit more quickly, I mean, we say bring it on. <laughs> so it's depending on how you look at it. Yeah, and you, you all need to be uh, encouraged because um, it's all about salvation. It's all about... yes. Uh, the God who died on the cross for your sins. And for those of you who are not versed in Bible prophecy, the whole reason why we started these happening now is to calm your spirit yes. against all the craziness that's out there. But I understand that if somebody walked into the building right now, you'd think, those two people on the stage are crazy. Globalism and what? That's none of that's going on. Um, the reason why you, you think that way is because you have the wonderful privilege of being able to think that way. You see, it can, it's an option for you. But for many people in the world, it's not an option. It's being imposed upon them. And globalism is a real danger because it, it goes lockstep in its actions to, be, uh, to control the people, to control the economy, to control... Uh, the masses, and it's normal for someone to say, oh my gosh, those, those people are 
Jack and Jan or that, those people are conspirators. They're crazy. This is a conspiracy theory. It's Bible. Well, it's Revelation 13. Yeah. It's all outlined. If, if we were to tell you that there's, there's a man coming and he's going, to, he's going to get people to follow him and he's going to really rob everybody by simply demanding that they add a prefix, three-digit pre prefix to their identity number, to their social security number, or their euro number. And, and he's going to control the world without any money, all numbers. You see, that's insane! You need to read Revelation chapter 13 because it's all right there. The good thing is, if you're a Christian, I would love some night we could have this out, is have a wonderful argument regarding why. It's a very rarely argued case. Why the rapture, theologically, must happen before the advent of the seven-year tribulation period. There, there are perfect theological argumentations why that must happen. And it comes all out of the Old Testament. And uh, people, you need to be encouraged by that. You need to be encouraged because yeah. there's, there's naysayers about oh, the rapture. Jack, there's we people were... saying, no, it's not going to happen. Yeah, well. well, I told you before, the next time you see somebody say that, you ought to give them a hug and, and shake their hand and tell them, man, I'm meeting somebody right now fulfilling Bible prophecy. Because yeah, the Bible it, says in the last yeah. days, there'll be people saying, he's not coming back. How do I talk to my pastor about teaching about biblical pro I do. <laughs> you know what? I would go to your pastor with a gift. I would go to your pastor with uh, the gift, perhaps, of Dr. John Wolverd, W A L V O O R D, Dr. John Wolverd, with his book, um, The Prophecy Knowledge Handbook. It's about this big, it's the most exhaustive. Uh, executive work by the greatest eschatological scholar I think that's ever lived, Dr. John Wolverine. He's in heaven now. Yeah. Give your pastor that book as a gift and ask him, Pastor, I wish you would teach on Bible prophecy, and I got you this book. Could, could, you, look, could you look at it, please? Because you can't, find buddy, you can't find anybody more diplomatic than Dr. John Wolverine on introducing what that pastor you're referring to might think is But Jack, tough, I think this goes back things. to our opening discussion on Laodicea and that the church today has steered so far away from this topic, uh, partly because they want to grow the church and the church growth movement and everything. And so this, what we're talking about is deemed as all sorts of things, doom and gloom, it won't grow the church, it's not productive, it's controversial, it's divisive. And so the pastors, by and large, and I think Brent Miller, who's coming out here in the next two, oh, uh, couple weeks or so. I think Hawaii in February. I don't, well, I don't, his film, uh, Before oh. the Wrath, you and I are in the film Before the Wrath. Before the uh, Wrath. Uh, he, well, he spoke at my conference in September, gave a 20-minute presentation introducing Before the Wrath. You are, you're in it. In case you don't, didn't know, you're in it. I don't even remember. Amir is in it. J.D. Farag is in it. I say about three words in it. Um, anyway, he says 98% of the churches today will not talk about what we're talking about. 98%. That's um, a survey done by all oh, Lifeway and others looked into this and, and quizzed pastors. That's why you got so this is, question. Isn't that funny, you guys? So pastors are afraid to talk about it because it might damage church growth. So yeah. look around. Yeah. <laughs> look around. You knew tonight was coming, and you could have stayed home. You came. But you know what? I think the last time Jan was here, when we did this, I think we had somewhere north of 500 or 600,000 views. That's just YouTube. Did you know that? Did you know a couple weeks ago, Don Stewart and I were here, right, together? Uh, Don just told me this uh, tonight, that we're, we passed... Uh, we're north of 300,000 views in two weeks. 
What does that mean? It means that people are hungry for it because people don't get it. And, and they want to know. They, they want to have, know. they want to be taught, what does the whole Bible say? And so that's why we started these happening nows. But martyrdom has happened in the church since the church was born. Since James, okay? Don't think for a moment, look, Jesus could come back right now, okay? That's a fact. He could come back tonight. If he doesn't come back and pandemonium breaks loose in America and people are targeting Christians... Oh my goodness, they're targeting Jews now. What if they decide to start targeting Christians? And it really begins to get unhooked, unhinged. If you don't know your theology, you're going to say, wait a minute, I thought Jesus was going to come back before this. Well, what about the believers in North Korea? It didn't happen for them. Are you with me? You've got to endure until he does come. Don't confuse enduring hardship and persecution with the tribulation period. The church must suffer persecution. It has for 2,000 years. It's coming to us. The seven-year tribulation period is the wrath of God coming upon a Christ-rejecting world. So listen to this. 1 Thessalonians 5. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren... You have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Listen, don't answer anyone out loud. Comes as a thief in the night to who? To you? Listen carefully. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. As labor pains upon a pregnant woman, they shall not escape. But you brethren, are not in darkness so that that day should overtake you as a thief. We are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the dark nor of the night, uh, of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep and... He's talking about spiritual sleep. God help us with our sleep. Physical yeah. sleep you need. I need. Yeah. Spiritual sleep, sleep at the night. Those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But let us who are of the day put on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we live or die, that we should live together with him. So whatever's coming to the world regarding this, these events... We're ready. We're ready both to die for him now, but we're also ready to live for him at his coming if it's next week. That's what this, that's simple Bible teaching. Um, but, but Jack, Jack, the wrath during the tribulation is so grievous it's, that if anyone, even tonight, yeah. we want you to escape it's so simple. Oh. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and, and escape, escape the things to come. And, in, and w when that is all happening on earth, and again, it's, it's just unspeakable. The seals, the trumpets, the bulls, we're enjoying heaven. Now, in the meantime, you know, let's be winning the lost and causing as many to escape here as possible. Um. I mean, so that's the, that's the essence. That's, that's the essence of end times. It's not looking necessarily at signs and, and all the things and connecting the dots. Yep. That's all important. I think that we be aware of, of the things that the Lord is showing yep. us. But ultimately, it's to warn the lost, uh, the lost, warn the lost that you can escape all of this, the wrath to come. The wrath to come is the tribulation, and that's what the believer escapes. And if you aren't sure of that, please don't leave tonight until you yeah. are sure. Do you think that the extreme hate for President Trump is due to him defending Christianity? No. I know that there are political and other reasons also, but do you think that's the dominant underlying reason why he's so hated and attacked by those on the left? I do not believe that, although that's a factor. It's a factor. Okay, it's a factor, but it's not the factor. I actually know what the factor is, 100%. It's not his hair. <laughs> it's not his money. It's his policies. 
and number one policy that causes him to be hated from people who don't even know. They absolutely hate him because he's the most pro-life power broker the nation has ever seen. Satan, Satan, I talked about it on Sunday, Satan's number one area throughout all of Israel's history and what all the pagan worship systems of the world have in common is human sacrifice and child sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump has come along and said, I don't believe in that stuff and we're going to stop it. And so he's hated for that. And the, that his, the, 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 the feminism movement hates him because it, it's not the feminism movement. It's the fact that the feminists feel attacked by his pro-life view. The church I have gone to for several years is changing directions. They are headed toward... NAR. Oh, no. Oh, you need to. Okay, this is a <laughs> Thanks. Ideas. <laughs> I need uh, to. And workshops are being held. <laughs> Mystical realm workshops. Wow, really? What should I say to people that really love this church and don't seem to see where they are heading? Jan. Thanks. <laughs> no, no. The, I told you in the introduction, this is her, this is where she has well, her the, pulse finger. NAR, this in parentheses. New Apostolic Reformation. We actually talked about this last year, right here, and I referenced my deep concern for the rise of this, which is the headquarters. I'm going to show a clip of it on Saturday. Everything on Saturday will be posted on YouTube eventually. I'm going to show a clip of the chaos of, of Bethel Church, Redding, California. Complete yeah. chaos. It, and it's not... <laughs> Is God is chaos of God? Did did no. you guys hear the name Bethel Church in Reading? Yes. And this new Apostolic Reformation. Then they have a whole belief system, Seven Mountain Mandate. They believe they're going to bring heaven to earth. We're going to heaven comes to earth when Jesus Christ returns in the second coming, and we come with him. That's when heaven comes to earth, not before. These folks believe otherwise, but. There's also complete chaos going on. Now, right before Christmas, they tried to raise the dead, um, this little two-year-old, Olive. And she, How many of you saw that in the news? Anybody raise your hands? I mean, it made headline news all around, around the, the world. world. All around the world. And it was heartbreaking. And they, were, and they were doing special services right before Christmas. Olive, come forth. Come forth from the morgue. She, they put her in the morgue for a week. <laughs> believing she would raise, rise up and, I guess, come forth from the morgue. It, it's a terrible abuse to the little two-year-old, to the parents, though it was the parents' idea. Um, and what they believe is that... But it came out of what they were taught. It's come, what they're the parents' taught, idea, but it came out of what they were taught. What they're taught is that they can, the New Apostolic Reformation can do all that the apostles of old, apostles and prophets could do, and that they are now the new apostles and prophets. Now, now look, I, I get emails from a good Assembly of God people who say, Jan, please expose this, because we're Charismatics and Pentecostals, and we don't go along with yeah. this, this kind, of, uh, kind of craziness, which, again, I'm going to show a clip of, because you really have to see it to believe it. You really do. But <laughs> or, here's or the thing. Here's the that. thing. This is the fastest growing denomination in the world. Is fastest right? growing denomination in the world is the New Apostolic Reformation. Wow. And, and C. Peter Wagner gave the title, I believe, about 1970. He gave it a, a name. And uh, now there's tons of apostles and prophets, self-declared apostles and prophets, who are trying to do what they did you know, 2,000 years ago. But in the process, all I'm saying is in the process, there's some terrible, terrible destruction going on. I, look, I did a radio program. Um, try to, if you can look up Understanding the Times Radio, watch it on YouTube. He's one of my favorite guests right here. Thank uh, you, Jim. Oh, you are, because you're articulate and you tell it like it is, and you don't mince words, and that's what, we don't have time to mince words. <laughs> we don't have time, we don't have time. I did a radio program two weeks featuring a couple. They happened to be from Minneapolis. And, and their daughter, Caitlin, was, well, she went voluntarily to Bethel Redding. She was uh, given, it's called Sozo Counseling, where they programmed her 
to believe that her parents abused her. I know the parents, they didn't abuse her, okay? But she believed it through this counseling and to this day, that's 10 years ago, they lost Caitlin 10 years ago. And, and that's what they're doing is they're doing some unhealthy things that aren't of God, okay? It's not of God to take a daughter who was 20 then, now she's 30, I, I believe, to take a daughter and ostracize her from the family and, and convince this little, this, this 20 year old, now a little older, that the parents abused her. And so when the parents would come visit her at Bethel, the girl would take off and run, terrified of this wonderful couple that I know. So I did two weeks on air. Do you know? Do you know that this couple heard from like-minded parents all yeah. around the world? Yeah. All around the world had the same experience. This is of God. This is New Apostolic Reformation. Now, I'm getting myself in huge trouble because I'm being pretty blunt. But is this of God? I, d I believe it is not of God. Well, just, I do not and believe. I don't encourage anyone to listen to the teaching that comes out of that movement. Do not, unless you're really grounded. Uh, but it is, it's exactly what we're talking about on Sundays. It's exactly, yeah, exactly. it's exactly what Peter was saying. And the result, remember the result, or we'll study it soon. The result is that they the people who observe these, this craziness, the world winds up blaspheming the God of salvation because of their exactly. antics. And that's, that's what you see. It's an embarrassment. It's an embar it's embarrassing God. And if you it's, ever saw it, you'd understand. It's, it's a, so, um, you can YouTube all of this. You can just go into YouTube and type these things in and you can watch the images and it's truly shocking. And it's end-time apostasy. If, I'm sure there's more questions, but maybe can someone, very quickly, before we go to the next one, we're out of time, but does anyone have another question regarding NAR, N-A-R, New Apostolic Reformation? Does anybody have a question that they can shout out clearly and quickly if you have a question regarding NAR? Their music um. is... Listen, this is, thank you for the question. Yeah, thank you because for the question. Because now, I don't know, I have a... I have a great uh, handicap because of, for this reason. She mentions the music. Let me back way up. There was, way back when, you guys, um, a movement that broke away from Calvary Chapel called the Vineyard Movement with John Wimber. And they created vineyard music. And it was amazing. Amazing music, very great music. Then there were um, others, and, and then I'll just throw them in. There's, for example, there's teaching that goes on at Hillsong that is horrific, horrific. and dangerous. Horrific. Dangerous and, her and horrific. Great music. Um, I could go down the list. St strange that strange ministries that are out there in, in some areas, clear violation of scripture with really great music. But I'm driving along singing the songs not knowing that the founders of all this music is white. Does it offend me, the song? No, because I know what the word the means and holy and Jesus and God. And so I'm driving along and I've been blessed by music that later on I found out was written by somebody who goes to Bethel. It's putting, the church is doing this, playing it, really putting their stamp of approval on New Apostolic Reformation. And if you really want to do that, pastors, I, and I think all some of us are saying is, why don't you look at the words of the, look at the authors of the music, uh, look at the theology. I just did two weeks on air. It's on my website, it's on YouTube. Two weeks on air on the worship wars and this was kind of the essence of it, is pastors, can we really excuse, not only when it's coming from the sources that we're talking about, but the theology, even how about the lifestyles? What if the, what if the author of some of the music, um, Ray Boltz, for instance, homosexual, I mean, but we're singing it in church? So I think we gotta look at, at, at the music in the church and look at the words, look at the theology. Is it promoting kingdom now? We're gonna bring heaven to earth. It, 
much of the Bethel music, not all, some of it's beautiful, but some of the Bethel music, Hillsong music is going to talk about we're, going to, we're bringing heaven to earth. Or Jesus, he, he left heaven because he was lonely for us up there and he came down because he wanted to be with us. Well, that's horrible theology. That's horrible theology. Why do American Jews keep voting? Why? Well, strong delusion. Yeah, strong delusion. Um, they do love. Remarkable. They love liberalism. Some of them come from their ancestors, their parents, grandparents came from socialist countries. They only know socialism. But here's, I think, the biggest reason. I, I, look, I asked my Jewish relatives, you know, why do you forever and ever and ever and ever, going back to Hubert Humphrey and maybe even before that, you always vote Democrat. And they would tell me that we have to stand up for the little person. We, we can't be a part of this big corporate, I mean, even though they maybe had corporations, but they've been taught, just look, evangelicals have been taught, we have to stand up for righteous values, um, biblical worldview. Jewish people have been taught, we have been persecuted, we are going to stand for those, the minorities. So, so the we're going to vote, yeah, we're going to vote for the team that keeps the people that serve them exactly. in bondage. Exactly. And um, it's isn't delusion. it funny, we came out of bondage, out of Egypt. Yeah, out of Egypt. But we vote for people who keep people in bondage and on a welfare system. And what's tragic about that, that, that question is asked a million times a day. Yes, yeah. It never gets a good answer. Remember the Jews, I mean, in their defense, they have been blinded by God for a purpose. Um, the, blinders so come off, the blinders come off during the tribulation. That, and one third of them get saved during the tribulation. That's when the blinders come off and they can see. But right now, there's a remnant. I have saved Jewish relatives. Many of them have passed away now. Um, but I, I still have some that are left. By and large, they have been blinded by God. It's something I don't fully understand, never will. But you need to take that in consideration. Awesome. And I think that drifts over into the political world as well. Uh, when we talk about the blindness. That is so, we'll end with this, it is so excellent what she just said because the Bible tells us in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he says that, now listen carefully, it, he said to those who do not receive the gospel, that they do not believe, Satan has blinded them so that they cannot believe. But then you come to Paul's letter in Romans right. about the Jew. Did you know that Satan, if you look at the scripture and take it exactly as it said, says, Satan has blinded the eyes and the minds of the Gentile world. The Bible says God has blinded the minds of the Jew. That, that, you say, well, well, that's unfair. Can't Jews get saved? Of course they yes. get saved. There's Jews that are getting saved today. But as, as a nation goes, as a people, they're walking in a blindness that they're embracing, and it's a, it's a blindness that God has given to them. The seven-year tribulation period, yeah. that all comes off. So... You say, well, Jack, that didn't sound fair. Can a, if a Jew wants to accept Jesus today as Messiah, can he do that? Yes, of course he can. You understand that? If you're Jewish, it doesn't mean you're condemned. If you're here tonight or you're watching right now and you're Jewish and you say, wait a minute, I want, I want Jesus as my, my Messiah. That means God is lifting the veil from your eyes Amen. and you receive him right now, okay? And, and you go to him. Go to John chapter three. John, how do you say, uh, Yohanin, is that right? Go to Yohanin chapter 3, if you're Jewish, and read how a Jew gets to heaven. Jesus tells Nicodemus, a Jew, how to get to heaven. So we've just spent the hour looking at what's happening now, as Jack Hibbs in Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, California, like to call it. A lot is happening now, so much we could have spent hours and hours talking about it. And I know many of you lack that opportunity. And you know, while it's tempting to unplug, so to speak, to turn off the electronics, the media, even turn off Christian media, I encourage you not to do that because you cannot warn others when you are tuned out. 
And let me stress again, things are going to grow darker and we must shine more brightly. News of the day can be shocking and disheartening. God is trying to wake us up and shake us up so that we will look up. A few will awaken and some will listen, so we must not unplug from the news and information because you might be someone's early warning system. I remind you of the verse in Ezekiel 33, 6 about the watchman. It says, but if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet so that the people are not warned and the sword comes and takes any of them, that person is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. I want to remind you again that the hour is so very, very late. Someone must warn the world. God may be calling you to be the one to do that. And remember, watchmen have a very lonely assignment today. I want to thank you all for listening. 